Today we're at Chirubini Yachts and we are going to do a barrier coat and rebuild the bottom of a famous Cherubini 44. These are some of the most beautiful boats built in the 70s and today. This boat spent 30 years in the water. She had some blistering issues. They peeled the boat, spent about two years in the yard drying out, or inside actually drying out, and now she's ready for her new bottom. And they've peeled the boat, the bottom of it, taken all the gel coat off, and gotten down into the, um, into the structural glass in the bottom of it. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put a barrier coat and rebuild the bottom of the boat. I'll do a close up here so that you can see what's going on here. In a close up, you can see where they've peeled off the material and it's kind of rough. And it's got some, some high spots to it and low spots to it. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna mix up some slow, medium hardener with low viscosity resin. And we're gonna saturate the bottom of the boat with one coat. Now in about two hours, three hours, this should set up to the point where we can come back and start to fill in the low spots with a filled putty system. And what we're gonna do is take that same resin and hardener in a couple of hours. We're gonna come back and make a slurry and fill in all those low spots. Now we're saturating it first because that will allow the resin to wet into all these dry spots. All this white that you see here is dry glass and we want the resin to fill in. And we'll come back and film after we've done that so you can see how it's wet out. So what we're gonna use is the low viscosity resin and medium hardener today. We've got a couple of pans set up with these rollers. These are a, a nylon bristle roller. It's a very different roller. It'll hold a lot of resin. It'll carry it to the surface and it won't create a lot of air bubbles like foam rollers do. We're gonna mix the resin two to one with the hardener and that'll give us about 40 minutes in one of these pans so that we will have plenty of time to get it up onto the surface. Now because of the size of the job, we're just going to use quart cups and we're going to do two quarts of resin to one quart of hardener here. We're going to mix it all up at one time into a five gallon bucket, a clean five gallon bucket. Nice work, Zig. We're going, to, we're going to do a great job of mixing this stuff up. We're going to mix it for about a minute with a, um, with a power mixer and uh, scrape the sides and then we'll pour it off into the buckets and get it up onto the surface. This is one of our new blenders that we're going to use to do this with. It's a spider mixer. And we're going to do a real thin coat so we don't have to load it. And you can see that it's already saturating the surface. We figure that it takes three gallons to coat the bottom of this with uh, bottom paint, so that's what we're going to do. We'll mix up about three gallons to do the uh, initial coat on the bottom, and then we'll come back and fare. This whole project should take somewhere around oh, 12 to 18 gallons. We've coated the boat, and we're taking the excess resin off. And the reason we're doing this is because when we go to put glass back on the boat, we want it to be glass against glass, not glass floating in resin. The other reason we do it is we take the squeegee and we're pushing the excess resin into any voids that might be there. So um, this will take probably 40 minutes. The whole boat has been coated now. It's taken about a gallon and a half of material, a lot less than I thought it was going to take, to actually coat the whole boat uh, with a single uh, individual first coat on it. And that will actually waterproof the boat. That will lock it in. That will also take care of any dry fibers and uh, any delamination issues where there's a, a lip left from one of the uh, intermediate layers. And what we're going to do in our next coat is we're going to make a slurry of material that we can actually roll on here and then we'll squeegee off again to fill the rest of the voids that are on the bottom. And you can still see there's some deformations from when they peeled the boat. We need to fill those deformations back and we'll use Cellafil to do that with, which is our filler that replaces Cabasil. It's not toxic, doesn't float around, and it'll work perfectly in this atmosphere. Here's the Cellafil material that we're going to use. 
Cellophyll is actually an acellulose. It's an acellulose paper pulp. It's a powder, it's like a talc. And that replaces colloidal silica. And we're gonna mix that with the low viscosity resin and medium hardener. We're gonna mix it up into a slurry. We'll show you what that looks like uh, when we get it mixed. We're gonna put it into the roller pans. We're gonna roll it onto the surface. There, we're gonna take these paddles, and normally a squeegee would work as well, and we may use some squeegees too to help fill those voids in and screep the surface. What we're doing here is we're putting two quarts of resin and a quart of hardener in a bucket to make our slurry. And we know that it took about a gallon to coat the bottom of this 44 footer in our first coat. And so we'll probably mix up not much more than this, which ought to do it, maybe another quart and a half. We'll see how it goes. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, and we're gonna mix that first. And we'll mix it for a good minute, minute and a half, and then we'll add in the filler. Okay, so we've mixed it for about a minute and a half, the resin and hardener, and now we're gonna start to drop our cellophyll in and continue to mix it to turn into a nice slurry. So let's go ahead and keep mixing. These bristle rollers have a nylon core and they're very solid um, so they don't crush, they don't fall apart and they'll load a, quite a bit of material in them. This is a, an eighth inch um, close nap uh, roller which likes to load up but when you roll on it doesn't leave a lot of bubbles behind. See now, the consistency of the material, it's just getting thick, 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 so it, it'll create a sheet uh, when you pull your paddle out, um, and it's gonna hang on the surface when we go and load it onto the surface. That's about what we're looking for. And to get to this consistency, we put a half a gallon of the cellophyll in with three quarters of a gallon of resin and hardener mix. So it's like pancake batter. All right. Good description. All right. All right. Yep. So we're going to roll it on and you can see how it hangs like pancake batter. And we don't need too much because we're going to come back with the squeegees and squeegee it and it'll take it out of the high spots and into the low spots. And we'll do that for the whole boat. And again, getting it on will probably take us about 20 minutes and then we'll come back and squeeze it off. So now we've put that slurry like pancake batter on and we've squeegeed it up. And you can still see that there are some deformations, but they're filled in pretty well. Now we're going to come back with matte and we're going to hit it with matte. Now where you see the areas that look kind of white now, right here, that's where there's heavier loads of the cellophyll and epoxy. The darker areas here were still the high spots where it was in pretty good shape. But um, this hull overall is at a point where we can pretty much start to glass it. The next thing we're going to do, these guys want to use um, chopped strand mat and to build this back and with our epoxy because of the low viscosity and its ability to wet out the low surface tension will wet through the one and a half ounce mat beautifully. So here we are. The next step is for us to start glassing the boat. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, we're going to use this mat. It's, uh, is this one and a half ounce mat? Yes. It's a one and a half ounce mat that we're using. Um, what you see here is that he's tearing the edges of the mat. And the reason you do that in this case is so that you don't have seams. So if you tear the edges, it'll roll out and, and be smooth on the edges and you won't see different seams. So what we're going to do is, we're going to mix up some resin, we're going to wet the boat out just like we did before. We're going to put the resin on the hull and then we're going to put the mat up onto the resin it will saturate out. So we're just going to mix the resin and hardener. We're going to use the low viscosity and slow medium mix again. So here, what we're doing is we're putting the epoxy on the surface and then we're taking mat, putting it up, and then rolling out the bubbles and flattening it out with a bubble chaser. And 
And what's nice about this is that when you use epoxy, you can work a little bit slower. You don't have to go quite as fast. You don't have to rush because the epoxy gives you time on the surface, in the pot, and on the roller to work with. Unlike a polyester or vinyl ester where you're very limited in time. Well, it's the next morning and uh, we're back on the Cherubini 44. And we got about uh, a quarter of the, you see here, about a quarter of the, the stern done. Um, we got the whole boat uh, pretty much fared and barrier coated and now the glass is going on. They're DAing this morning the starboard side of the boat. Um, and they'll knock this down. It'll take about an hour or so for them to DA the boat. There's no amine blush, so they don't have to wash the boat off this morning. Can you imagine if you had to get out rags and water and wash this whole thing this morning, get all the amine blush off before you had to sand it and then recoat it? It would take hours. And if you missed any of the amine blush, um, you would have delamination issues. You can see how clean that surface is. There's nothing on it. That's the beauty of moss epoxy. We moved through this project pretty quickly yesterday. They finished up at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And this is all mat that you're seeing here that they put onto the surface. 1.5 ounce mat with moss epoxy. It'd be nearly impossible to do that with any other epoxy. It's a great job. It's going to come out fantastic. I want to thank Cherubini Yacht for helping us on this and letting us film in here.